All right, so I give me a second. Oh, and I know we're going to give my people time to get in here, but I'm going to share my screen because I found this video that really speaks to what we are going to be talking about today. Doing this show for a while now, and I think we've gotten to know each other pretty well, but I know there are still some questions that we have for each other that we never had the chance to ask. So we just made up a second up a segment and this is called I've always wanted to know. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Okay. And Lonnie, because you brought it up, I'm starting with you. Yes. Put her in the right. Right. Here we go. Lonnie, each of us has something that obviously um stresses us out or gives us anxiety. Yes. What is it that keeps you up at night? Oh, so many things that keep me up at night. But what really keeps me up at night is as I get older, I want to make sure that I have money. Because yes. I don't have a family, you know what I mean? And that's what really keeps me up at night. Aww. That, yeah. You, know, you say you don't have a family. No, when I say, you know, when you think about as you get older, yeah. you know, you see so many stories of people. And the reason why I'm crying is I used to, when I was 22 years old, I had my first major layoff at my job as an engineer and people worked for 30 and 40 years and they lost their job and they lost their pension. Yeah. And I, that was one of the reasons why I decided to work for myself because I said, I didn't want to not have something. Yeah. yeah. And so that's what made me embark on having my own career and everything like that. And now that I do, I still think, well, you know, as you get older, what's going to happen? Yeah. I don't have children. I do have a wonderful partner. But, hey, I got to take care of him, too. Make sure he's okay. <laughs> you know, so it's like as you get older, yeah. you, you don't have, like, that immediate family. I think, well, what's going to happen to me at night? So I'm preparing. Yeah. I don't, you know, I... I prepare. That's how I am as an engineer. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm preparing for my golden years, as they say. I'll still be performing. I'll still be doing different things. But it's important to get your finances together. And statistically, as African Americans and as Black people, we don't prepare. Yeah. You know? And it's like because it wasn't taught to us. Yeah. Right? No. So that's the thing that keeps me up at night, is making sure I have enough money to take care of myself. I don't want to be a burden on anybody. I don't want to have to, you know, depend on people. Yeah. So that is my, that's what keeps me up. But then I take some sleeping pills and I go to bed. That's <laughs> <laughs> so real. I feel like so many people alone. can relate to that. Yes, yeah, so there are so many women out there that, that worry about that. That's what keeps them up at night. You know, that they maybe don't have the children that are going to be there by their side to take it. Yeah. That, I get that. That is, wow. That was not what I expected. She's the yeah, this is the reason why I was nosy, because I wanted to ask. And now, Garcelle, I'm going to ask you your question. Okay. So, Man, I thought. that was all of Tony, why you be all deep and stuff? My eyeballs are all wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> about that. But, yeah, I saw, and I don't even watch the real house. So I don't even know how I came across I that. I, oh, do. yeah, I don't even know how I came across that, but I was just like, Okay, okay. That was perfect. Really so that's thing. essentially that's what we're talking about tonight. So I guess welcome to Monday Night Mom Chat, you guys. This is cool. Tony and I were trying to figure out what number this is. We think it's 12, but we're not sure. But either way, I am Tanil Jackson. I always forget to introduce myself. I think just because the assumption is everybody know everybody knows me, but just in case I'm the founder of the Chicago Land Mom Squad. Uh, we have been around for 11 years. And can I say the past couple weeks, when I say I have been in my like admin feelings, because like my regulars have been missing, like Maria, uh, Dr. Kadan, Ready Rock. And so there is a function and a feature on the mom squad where you can see people that are no longer available. And Ready Rock, who's also a friend, it was like her name had grayed out. And I said, Did she leave the mom squad? What did I do? And you know, then I go to look for her and I can't find her this weekend. Everybody in the city of Chicago became a Delta. So congratulations to all the mom squad moms. <laughs> <laughs> become Deltas. Um, and I know Dr. Skeins, Femi, is off tonight. 
um, just because she's been doing a lot of work behind the scenes and it's first week of spring break. So happy spring break, CPS, I think, right? Is CPS yeah. spring break? But either way, welcome to the mom squad, Monday night mom chat. I'm officially out of my feelings. So I'm excited about that. It's gardening season. I've been in my yard for a couple um couple I, didn't, I did a couple hours today so i'm very excited about that um so yeah so we'll, from there we've got a really great guest so donna do you want to introduce yourself sure so i am a mom and a grandma so i have two sons uh, a 40 year old son and a 34 35 year old son and four granddaughters uh, twins who are 19 11 year old and a one year old will be one years old in April 27th. Oh, and I've worked in corporate, I've worked in academia, I've done a lot of different things, and I'll talk about that as we go through today. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, Donna. And my name is Tony Husbands, long term member, long term member of the Chicago Land Mom Squad and co founder or Troy founder <laughs> of uh, Debt Free Divas. And also, um, I would say a long term friend of Dr. Donna. So she's a, we met in graduate school almost 20 years ago. Yes, ma'am. And I've been hanging on her coattails. <laughs> Oh. I'm like, you're not getting away from me. So yeah, so so Don and I have been friends for about 20 years. And over the last 20 years, I have learned so much from her. And I've had the pleasure of, of interviewing her on various, you know, podcasts and, and sharing her knowledge with um, various groups that I'm that I'm connected with. So I'm really excited to share her with the mom squad because she okay. she's got a dynamic story. I mentioned if you guys have seen it in the in the lead up that um she is the quintessential millionaire next door and if you don't know that if you don't know that book that's actually one of my like favorite books i'm kind of a i'm a nerd by trade right i'm just i'm just a nerd but i do i definitely love um, financial books so tom and uh, this uh, in all hour just putting it out there i'm going to be sharing resources with you guys so get your pencils out take notes because there's definitely things i want you to read and i'll start off with the uh, millionaire next door is a book by thomas j stanley and I'm telling you, everything that that man talked about in terms of he surveyed, ah, she got it right there, millionaire next door, right? <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that is an excellent read for anybody who is who has the the um, I guess the desire mm -hmm. to grow well. Um, and I think that's one of the things is like if we don't see it, and and unfortunately, um, in our community. Um, uh, wealth is not something that is 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 common. Building wealth is not something that is common. And I'm not saying that as a dig on, on the Black community, just as a, a matter of numbers. Only 2% of African Americans in this country have a net worth of $1 million or more. 2% people, right? So we are very hardworking, okay? Mm -hmm. We are very productive people. Oh, Thomas J. Stanley was the author, Tamika. Um, we are very hardworking, we're very productive, but we are not doing a very good job of keeping and maintaining the wealth that we produce. And so that's why I want, we um, want to have this topic, this talk here today. This month, if you don't know, is Financial Literacy Awareness Month. I think I posted, not I think, I know, I posted the links for the um, Money Smart Week. This is actually Money Smart Week that's going on right now. So if you don't know that, I'll find it and put it in the, the comments. Money Smart Week is going on right now. You can find free workshops, virtual, you can find free workshops all over Chicago, Chicago land area, any, on any topic from just basic budgeting to investing to anything else you can find this week. Um, take advantage of stuff like that because the more we know, the more we know, the better we can do. And, and so that's why we um, have invited Donna on today to kind of to to allow us to sit at the feet of somebody who has done that. So so nothing we can tell by your glasses, girl. You the real deal. <laughs> right, listen, I see that. Enough, I, listen, I've, been, I've been learning this for like the last twenty years. So you guys have the next uh, hour or so. I've been looking in that background. I said she got it over there. <laughs> <laughs> listen to you. Let, let me just talk about the millionaire next door while we talked about the book. So mm -hmm. one Christmas. My dad, we were very young. We were just all starting, myself and my siblings. Um, I have a sister and a brother at that time. My brother has passed. And we had just started our families. So he got us all together on Christmas and said, I want to give all the adults a copy of this book. 
okay? And I want to read to you the message that he said, because I think the message was powerful in what he did and then what he did afterwards too. So he said, dear family, this book, The Millionaire Next Door, contains some interesting ideas regarding saving and the accumulation of wealth. We think that this book may provide a basis for our family to look at some of our activities from a different point of view. Some of the book is downright silly. For example, the chapter on buying secondhand cars. On the whole, however, every member of the family, even the youngest, so even our children can get something from the reading through. It may require some conversations, which what we had afterwards, and explanation from an adult. Everyone should finish it before June and when we have follow-up meetings. It is important that you know that we believe that wealth is only a tool or an additional option. Most of the important things in life, including your character and your name, are free. Mm. Grandpa and Angie, okay? Yeah. And so then after he gave us this book and we read it, every Christmas after that, he also gave us money and we would talk about different portions of the book and have conversations about mm. accumulation of wealth, stocks, property, bonds, all kinds of strategies. And I think that's important what we should do. I think communication and talking about it is the first step in what we're doing today. So all strategies don't work for all people. Um, for example, I like nice glasses. So I spend extra money on glasses. <laughs> I don't buy expensive cars. I don't buy expensive clothes. But I put my money aside for my glasses. Everybody should understand, but we you can't do it all. And that's what we need to understand too. Mm -hmm. So you can't buy expensive glasses, expensive cars, expensive homes, if our budget doesn't you know, doesn't match up to it, we need to prioritize and so we need start, to stay towards it. Great point, Donna. So let's start with your dad because he's the original millionaire next door. Yes. And I, again, got a chance to know him before he passed away. A wonderful personality, very funny, loved his um, willingness to just talk and share with and pour into anybody. He didn't know me from Adam, right? And so <laughs> he accepted us into his home and definitely, definitely pour into um, anybody that was around him. But um, so like I said, he was the original Dr. Grant, <laughs> an original millionaire next door. But I like to know, I like for you to tell his his beginning because did your dad come from money? How did your dad like get his um uh I guess aspirations to build wealth and then take those steps being somebody who, as you're gonna find out, did not come from uh, money? No. My dad is one of 10 children who lived in a big home on I think is where King Drive, uh, King High School is right now. Mm -hmm. um, on King Drive, all of them lived together. When they got married, the married couples even came to live in the family. They were very, very poor. My mm -hmm. um, grandfather had um, a book stand, you know, but he was an mm -hmm. entrepreneur. Um, and only, I'd say about three of the 10 uh, siblings went to college. Okay. So mm -hmm. my dad went to college. He started off as a gym teacher. Okay. He worked his way. We lived in what we call the big house with all the other families. I didn't do it, but my brother and sister did. I was the baby. Okay. Um, until it was time for my dad to move out. And then he moved and he gradually went up to assistant principal, principal, district superintendent for Chicago Public Schools. And he ended as an area superintendent for Chicago Public Schools. So he was very ambitious. And with that, though, we started off poor and we gradually became middle class and got up. But also the way he spent money or didn't spend money, he used to wear polyester suits to work. We used to talk about him so bad, he said, but I got money in the bank. Mm -hmm. And he started building property and saving money and investing money and just building it up. And I did the same thing. Okay. And I learned from talking to him all those times about what to do. And like I said, you have to understand 
what your needs are, what your family's needs are at any point in time through your life. Mm. So it changes. Right. Mm. Did, so, was that enough about my dad or did you want me to? Yeah. Okay. And I, did you mention now that he started as a gym teacher? Yes. He started mm -hmm. as a gym. He started off as a yeah. gym teacher he started and he as a gym worked teacher. his way up. Now, the con to that is we didn't have a lot of vacations. So when I had my family, that's something that I built in is that I would spend, because he just worked so long and so hard that we didn't go on vacations as um, a family with my father, but my family did. So mm -hmm. when I got married and have kids, that's one thing that I changed that I thought was important for us to have more time together as a family on vacations. So what are some of the things, I guess, what are some of the important points that you either learn directly from your dad, like in terms of him, was he specifically like sitting you down like Donna, this is what you need to do with money or were you watching him and what are some of those I was watching him and ta he talked to me all the time oh lord have mercy he would <laughs> and he was very like he'd say you know now what you just did that was stupid that was not a good thing I mean so he was very um blunt with me he leveled with me but okay so for example when it was time for me to go to college he said I will pay for your college you will not have a loan but mm. also, you will not have a car. I'm going to give you a bike. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and so from that, I came out of college without any loan. And that's something that I did with my children. Okay. Mm -hmm. He also said, when you get a credit card, you will not pay that interest for that credit card. So every month, whatever you spent, you can spend in that month, but you got to pay it off. Mm. Okay. Mm hmm and then once I started working, he said, as soon as that, whenever there's money that somebody's going to match, like your pension, and they'll give you 50 cents to every dollar, you match the highest amount. And don't you dare ever, ever take it down. Mm. So these are all just lessons that I learned as I was growing up. Okay. Okay. Credit cards. We talked about everything and really talking to your children, I think it's really important about this. And I do it with my children and grandchildren all as it comes up. Now, one of the questions I have about your dad is as somebody who grew up poor, and so he didn't didn't grow up seeing um you know, and he well, grew up during the depression. That was another whole thing. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, so, how, so where did those, I guess, um, where did he learn his uh his strategies or his, in, you know, instincts for managing money. Where do you think that comes from? Common sense, kind uh -huh. uh -huh. of reading the book, resources, okay. talking to people. So it mm -hmm. was not, he didn't even have a financial planner. I did. Okay. I uh -huh. got a financial analyst when I was, mm -hmm. so like I said, as the generations changed, uh -huh. he got a little bit more sophisticated. I think yeah. later on in his career, he got one, but in the beginning, he didn't have one. Uh -huh. He would just talk to different people and find uh -huh. out what they were doing and what uh -huh. fit him. Uh -huh. Because I think it's important that you do the strategy of what's good, like I said, for you and your family. You just can't take everybody's ideas and say, that's going to work for me. Right, right. But it is important, I think, like you said, that's. I'm glad you pointed that out about talking to other people. Mm -hmm. So what I, one of the things I want to mention is just, okay, so you may not have um, that history in your family or personally, but maybe there are people around you. And I'll say that because Donna is one of those people for me, right? I, I call them now our money mentor. So maybe we need a money mentor mm -hmm. if that's not something that we're born with. And, mm -hmm. and it wasn't even something that was really formal. It wasn't something that was like formalized. Like she would say, girl, you know, there's a couple of us um, that are a little bit, that are a little bit younger than Donna. She wouldn't say girls, let's sit down and let's read. This. No, it, it, would be, it was like, we're girlfriends, right? So we're talking, we might be talking about boys, uh, you know, in one breath. And then now we're talking about finances. This is what we're doing with finances. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, or even if I ask her a question, like how did, case in point, um, I'd never known any family to have a summer property in another state you know, a, a summer house. Donna is the first family that I've ever hung around that had summer, that's, that had summer property and, and real estate in other states and things like, you know, so just seeing that opened my eyes. And that's, I think, and I told Donna, she's probably one of the, she planted that seed in me. And that, that's how we're here in Wisconsin now, buying a property that we intend to use as a, as a summer property, right. Or, or a vacation, a vacation property. So like seeing, and I didn't think about that at the time, 
Mm-hmm. But but it was it it you see stuff like that or talking to people and kind of understanding how they do things, mm-hmm. you can kind of adopt or pick and choose, or maybe that sparks something where you go do a little bit more research on it to mm-hmm. figure out how. Um so Donna, what were some of the I did had my dad had places in all kinds of states. Yeah. So he had a yeah. place in Michigan, a place in Florida three places in Chicago. And so that was his way of, and he saved. So one another strategy he taught me was, as we both went up our careers, mm-hmm. let's say you got a 10% raise. Well, don't go out and spend all the 10% and now have your budget be that high. You lived off what you lived off before, so maybe do 2%. And then do something else with that 8%. So we both did that. He did it first. And he taught me that you don't have to just buy a big house, the next big house. If you want to, fine, save for it. I didn't um, get a loan for a car until I was 50-something years old. I used to buy my cars outright. So I would say, okay, (laughs) I know I'm going to need a car. I need to have an account for my car. So I had a car account. Mm. Now, I'm not the type of person that needs, I don't need a BMW or a Lexus. And I did Hondas and Toyotas. So I would just save it when I got that money. And I keep cars for a long time. I keep them for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So that's not the kind of person I am. So it was fine doing that. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so um, talk about, um, let's talk. So these are all great things that you've done in terms of um, like strategies. I want you to share some of your maybe setbacks and how you were able to overcome some of those, because like like you said in the beginning, (laughs) life happens, life happens, and we still have to keep going forward. But a lot of times, especially for women, um, when we have those kind of major life interrupters, it impacts us significantly financially. Yes. So talk about some of those. So, okay. The eighties were great for me. I was getting promoted every two years, but uh, my at and was doing a divestiture. I was getting a family. I was getting kids. I was buying property. I was buying buildings. I was doing all this. The nineties like fell apart. I don't know what, <laughs> but, but my dad did say one thing to me. He said, who made you super mom? Who, how did you decide that you were going to be able to take on all of this and everything would be okay? Mm-hmm. So that's what happened in the 90s. So the first thing I did was I switched jobs. I was with um, Illinois Bell and Ameritech for like 19 years. And I decided that I wanted to go for a new job. Mm-hmm. So I did that. And then uh, my husband and I, our relationship. So I would, left Kim around the same year, okay? Mm-hmm. Then the new job laid me off. So I had no job in a divorce and had two kids that I was trying to take care of. So I was mm-hmm. like, oh boy. <laughs> did you have a savings? Were you, did, you, did you have a savings? I had a savings that I did not take down. Mm. And I went back to school for seven years when I met Tony and didn't save for seven years, but I still had that Illinois Bell pension up there and I didn't take it down. Now, mm-hmm. one time I did a loan off of it and I paid myself back and paid myself back the interest because it just had gotten so crazy. Mm-hmm. You worked and went to school? I worked first, got laid off, right. then went back to school. Well, that's what I'm saying. When you went back to school, were you working and going back to school? Like, yes, I was, well, I had a part time job and I got two fellowships. So I think that's the part I that's that's the part I wanted to like, you know, was there something was there like a supplemental something? So you had your right. part time and your so and and if you don't mind just being transparent about the part time, because I think even with that setback, that setback obviously could be an ego blow. And I think a lot of times we need encouragement on sometimes when you fall on hard times, it's OK to go get a job at Jewel. I remember my mom taking him going and working in the bakery or going and working at Burger King or going and working at McDonald's or whatever it is. Sometimes life setbacks Mm -hmm. have to take you all the way back. And sometimes it's that because at any point in the time, did you get on unemployment? No, I did not because I was in school and had these fellowships, but I started shopping at Aldi's. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I had the part-time job. Oh, I had gotten this big uh, condo in Hyde Park that was about $2,000 a month. Girl, I had to go and live in my family home. And my dad let me stay, but he made me pay rent. $600. So I went from $2,000 to $600. My income went from over six figures back in the 80s to zero and it was mm. zero for seven years except for the part-time job which so, was basically zero was basically <laughs> zero uh, for seven years and then i recouped and got back and i was mm. a professor and started building back up again but i think the important things behind that was a lot of people take down their money my dad said don't you dare take that money down and they bring down their pension then they spend it Mm-hmm. Now that I'm retired, I have that whole pinch. I have a couple of pensions mm. and different things that I have for that. So that was important. Changing my lifestyle and readjusting and pivoting, going from big two thousand dollar apartment to house, family home, and going to all these to go shop. Mm. And my son said, uh, "How are we living now? What are we doing here?" And I said, "You all are eating, right?" <laughs> 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 you got are you warm? On your back, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, um, that was the '90s. Were definitely rocky, very rocky for me. How did you do? How did you deal with that? Like, just I guess mentally, was there was there any challenges to like making that adjustment? Because I, I, or just even ego wise. Ego wise, you know, it was a big blow for me to get laid off because I was. I I thought I was a star. I thought I was everything back at Illinois Bell and Ameritech. I was getting promoted all the time. So all of a sudden I got slapped down and said, no, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, but um, so yeah, ego wise, I just had to kind of brush it off and say, I got these two kids. Mm-hmm. I'm a change and I'm, now I'm become a professor. So I need to go get this PhD in computer science, which I did mm. my second, second master's and PhD in you, you know, you. I was in the fetal position for maybe about a day or two, okay? okay. Mm-hmm. Crying, feeling sorry for myself. And then you got to say, okay, get up. So I think one of the things I'm hearing here is, which I think is will definitely be my takeaway, not only getting the book, but you were surrounded by conversations um, surrounding wealth. What What happens when we're not? Where do we go outside? Let's say it's me. Y'all, it's me. Hello, I'm not reading the book. Maybe I'm a buckle by the book. I might not read the book. <laughs> what? Talk to friend, talk to people who are who have been successful. Or and guess what? I bet you they'll have a story when they weren't so successful. Mm. Just like me, just like everybody. Because everybody has not had a wonderful time all these years. Mm. And then learn from that and then take some of their strategies, but talk. Some people will talk to you about it. And like uh, Tony said, have a financial mentor. Mm, yes. And I well, love if you can find that person, that would be great. I love to make a suggestion here. If you see that podcasts are great. If you're not readers, we if you're not if everybody's not a reader, right? Everybody's not <laughs> But maybe audiobooks are your thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not an audiobook person, right? But audiobooks might be your thing. And you as you're as you're commuting, pop in an audiobook versus, you know, on, on the way home instead of you know listening to the gossip, you know, news both ways or something like that. Mix it up. Um, maybe uh there are um YouTube, like they're like YouTubers. Maybe you want to watch videos. You you prefer to watch things like that, you know. So so um, there's a there's a group that I love to listen to, which is called Bigger Pockets. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of them. Bigger Pockets. They have podcasts. If you prefer to audio, they have YouTube videos. It's all about investments. They have um, um, uh, Bigger Pockets on you know Bigger Pockets for real estate. Bigger Pockets for investments. They have a, they they're really branching out. So they they have a lot of they interview a lot of people who are just regular average Joes. Who have decided that they wanted to do something in this area. So I like stuff like that, you know. Um, but I also like the idea of you might have a personal question. So if you have some friends that, you know, I'm sure you got a friend that has gone through some trials and tribulations and maybe now they're financially secure, especially if they're retired and they don't mm-hmm. have to work and mm-hmm. they got money. Mm-hmm. They had to build that somehow. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So just ask them questions. Right. You, you can ask me questions. So offline, you know, I can give you my number and you can ask me questions. It might be 13. Uh uh-uh, uh, it's 13,000 of us. Don't do that. <laughs> no, I'm talking about you. <laughs> oh, 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 I, I already know I'm about to call you. <laughs> uh, no, no. When, when you start talking about like financial planners, is there a, an amount of money ideally? Like people always say financial planners and you know, if you're still trying to make ends meet, you automatically know they ain't talking to you. You don't need a planner. You got zero. But is that not, is that the wrong idea? Yeah. See now when I got my first, you're right. When I got my first financial planner, I've had two. One was when I was a director at Ameritech, a district manager at Ameritech. So I had really made my, start making my money then. Mm -hmm. And then I got another one though, when I was professor at NCCU. Mm. Um, but you can also go to your bank and like Bank mm. of America has Merrill Lynch and they'll at least have one session with you and talk about yeah. what you're doing now and what you need to be doing for your retirement. So if you mm. go to your banks, a lot of banks now have that, yeah. that branch of um, retirement investments and, it's free. and things like that. And it's free. Another another option too um, for people that are working that have benefits, check out your um, make an appointment with your HR department and mm-hmm. find out if there are some resources that come through your job that mm-hmm. might include financial planning. That's like, where I got my first one was through Illinois Bell, so through, that yeah. is correct, Tony. Yeah. And at least, or at least there's somebody there that can talk to you about the 401k and right, exactly. all of the various options for your particular 401k. So, mm-hmm. so th- those are some resources also to, uh, to, to explore. If you don't have that at your job, um, there are nonprofit organizations. So nfcc.org is a, is a national federation, I think of credit counseling, nfcc.org is a place where you can start in terms of looking for nonprofit. Cause you want to, you, you definitely want to look for, um, if you're, if you're just starting out and don't have any resources, then, um, nonprofit, uh, nonprofit coaches and credit counselors is a good way to go. Um, and once wanna, you start in one of them, like, uh, Prudential or Fidelity, they have all kinds of resources behind mm-hmm. them with just a little amount of money. Mm-hmm. You know, once you just start with them, they'll mm-hmm. open up a lot of resources for you. Right. Better. So, and the, and the thing about it is there, there is so much there, it can be kind of information overload, like, you know, where do we start? Where do we start? Whatever. But I do, I do love Donna's idea is to first scan your current network. I'm, sh- I'm sure there's somebody you know, within a, a arm's length reach of you that might be somebody to at least start the conversation. And maybe if they don't know, and look at look at things like, um, like Donna was saying, look at how they run their own personal lives, you know? I don't know. I feel like Donna, I don't, Donna was nice about it. It was with a smile, but I think Donna told us to first reassess your priority. <laughs> And I, you know, that's what I heard. I heard we can either get glasses or a car, but we cannot get them both. I cannot get my nails done and my hair done at the same time. That's, that's what I heard. But that is so important. It really is. We we yeah. need to because I mean our our resources are finite, right? Our resources and our time. That's the other biggest thing. Our resources and our time is finite, and so we we do have to um decide on what is you know like what's important and then also kind of keep a mind on an eye on especially moms on our future because we have other people that are depending on us and other people that are they may want to go to college um this is why here's another book i told you i was gonna be sharing books opposite of spoiled okay by um ron lieber another great one um to think you know think about how we are not only uh, managing our finances but those lessons that are being passed down so donna talk about that because you have no like i said my dad now you would have thought my dad Mm -hmm. could afford to let me stay in the family home while i was in school right for the free (laughs) (laughs) i had to pay rent i had a contract i had a lease okay (laughs) And and, and i gotta stop you right there only because i think that is so important right now in the day and age that we're in um where we always want to overgive our children. Right. I think that we have to remind ourselves as parents that we are still responsible for teaching the lesson that that we need to survive without them. So you can't say, hey, overgrown child who should have been out, 
you can stay here for free. You have to at least, because at the end of the day, the world says you still have to pay something. You're not going to be doing this forever. So I think that some, I know there's some mamas that need to hear this and I can do it. I'm okay. I'll be the I'll toast, toast, I'll be the toast for today in, in <laughs> absence. But we need to, and I was talking about this the other day, but Reagan is, I'm, I'm working with my, my daughter's name is Reagan, but I'm working with her to, she asked, is there anything I can do to earn money? Because I want her to know that it just doesn't mm -hmm. fall. And I think that that is something that we have to, as we're building future spouses and all that good stuff, I don't want you to be the mama to let your, let your child mm -hmm. stay for, for free. And then when it comes time to then pass that on. So I think it, Again, mom squad, it's on us to run mm -hmm. me that dollar. Run me, run me two dollars, matter of fact. <laughs> <Right. laughs> my, my dad had a building that he wanted to sell. This is a funny story. So I said, you know, I, I, I'm going to buy that building. I'll buy that. And then he said, okay, we'll go get it appraised. I said, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Time out. Hold on. <laughs> I am your daughter. So I am not going to pay the market price for this building. So he said, oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. So he gave me a... <laughs> <laughs> hold on i draw the line now i'm with you but hold on it's a hurt right <laughs> daddy <laughs> but but talk about talk about so as we're talking about um our parental uh, responsibility to teach talk about how you have transferred that knowledge and those lessons from your dad onto your kids donna okay so um my when my dad died, my stepmother gave me the family home. Okay, as one of the things that we we kind of got. And so, um, my son was looking for a home. My youngest had just gotten married, and he had sold his condo for a nice profit. So that was good, but he could not afford the houses that he wanted. Okay, and so he said, mm, "You have the family home, right?" I said, "Uh huh." And I was renting it. <laughs> so, so I said, I will give it to you at a discount. And I gave him a real good discount. So he took that family home and then took the money he had made from selling his place and did a renovation. Mm -hmm. But also the whole thing about college. It was important for me as far as education that he was debt free. Yep. And so he understood how important that was because a lot of his friends had college loans. Mm -hmm. But when it was time for him to get his master's, I was mm -hmm. like, mm -mm, done, did undergrad. <laughs> so on his master's, he had to go and get a loan and he mm. uh, got a fellowship for it. Mm. So I think it's important that I continued on the lessons that my dad did kind of with me to my children too. Yeah. And mm. I am now saving for my grandchildren's college education. Yeah, I was gonna say those, those grand girls too, because she has uh, college age grandkids now. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys just did, you just went through, tell us about the book you just went through with them. Now, that wasn't did with a financial thing, that was more like character. Don't okay. give it up. Yeah. Okay. So that was dealing with their own self value and character. Uh -huh. And and my father really emphasized that with me because that's more important. Mm -hmm. Than the financial piece, okay? Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have your good name and your character, you you don't have yeah. anything, yeah, right. And so um, that's what we were dealing with with my. Uh, but we also did careers. We did strength builders on careers and things like that. So I take them on vacations. I don't give them a lot of presents. Uh -huh. I yeah. believe in um, experiences. Mm -hmm. So I take them a lot of different places, and then we have our uh talk time during those times okay and That's the awesome. author of that is that was Ian Levanzant right yes Van, Van yeah. Ian Levanzant is the author of don't give it up mm. um, to me don't give it away oh okay. sorry <laughs> don't give it away I, 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 look I already typed don't give it up <laughs> 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 like that sounds that sounds about right too right 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 exactly <laughs> <in the mind. laughs> so, so so Donna um if you were Let's say um, you, you're meeting this new person uh, who's looking for a money mentor. You have, uh, we have uh, 13,000 moms in here and they potentially want to talk to you, sit down, take you out for coffee um, mm -hmm. to be, uh, to be, uh, to, to kind of pick your brain about some things that they should be doing. What, what are maybe two or three things that you would tell a mom now um, 
that if she's not doing this, this is something financially she should start doing right away to build wealth. Mm. Saving for retirement. Because a lot of times we think, oh, we can wait and we can wait. But compound interest is your friend. Uh -huh. Okay, because as soon as you put in that 100 and it makes interest and then the next year it makes more and makes more. So that's how I built a lot of my wealth just on having old money that I had saved back when I was 21 and then the interest on top of that, on top of that. Okay. Um, the other thing is the priorities. Uh, you, you can't do it all. So you got to prioritize and the things that you want to do, try to buy it without actually going and put it on a credit card. Or if you do it on a credit card, do it in one month, but don't have a loan if you can, if you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Oh, another real important thing is having a budget so you know where your money is going. My girl. <laughs> okay. Because if you don't have no budget, you don't know what you're spending your money on. Okay. Well, so, I, I, I don't like you not no more. Having a budget and using that budget and looking at that budget at least oh, once a month oh, to say, <laughs> And it's it, and it's it's not something that I think um, I think it's something that it's a it's a skill that's learned over time, and it can be you know like budget can be like that four letter word to some of us, right? You know, it's not. Well, something that was real simple. Now I did a spreadsheet, mm -hmm. and I've been doing this since I was twenty one. I got a budget right now, okay, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I just list all the things that I want. I even have in my current budget. I have a vacation amount that I save every month so I can go on vacation since I retired. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have your food, your mortgage, and you just do it and list the months across January, mm -hmm. December, and some mm -hmm. things are going to change. On your children's birthday, you know you're going to spend three or four hundred dollars on that versus so if you're doing that, where's it coming from? Right. What are you not going to have if you're going to do that? Especially right. if you live in paycheck to paycheck. Proms are coming up. Proms are coming up. Graduations. Right? I'm seeing all the graduate, and I love the graduation photos. I love it. But those things, you know, the parties and the don't you dare and... tell the mamas and the moms crowd what they can do for prom. Don't you tell? Them. <laughs> but that's what I said. No, the that's not what I said. I said no, do I it. No, budget for it. Budget for it. Budget for it. Budget for it. And understand it. that if you're right. doing it here, where is it coming from? Right. <laughs> budget for it nope. and then pay, pay cash for it you know do what and and ca see cash is king and cash will let you know um this is what i can realistically do because you don't want to have these um these parties and these great life experiences and then be paying interest on them for years to come so no nobody's saying don't do these things we're just saying do them uh plan for them plan for them and budget, <laughs> and budget and them. Your, yeah, and put them in your and, budget. And, and guess what? You know they're coming. You know they're and, coming. Right. In the coming. beginning of the, if you in December, when you do the whole next year, you can plan for some stuff already. And then though, mm -hmm. when you're doing the first month, like in in um, January, when you're doing February, it's like, ooh, I didn't think about that. So let me go on and change February now. So you're changing it as you go to. Like for example, this was my birthday. For a uh, birthday month, I gave myself an extra four five hundred dollars. Cause happy happy birthday month! Thank you. <laughs> yes, but then yes. I had to take it from somewhere else when I did that. Right. Another, mm -hmm. another about planning, planning, putting things on autopilot. You know, a lot of, we're busy. Moms are busy. We got a lot a lot of stuff going on. You know, who's the author of the Automatic Millionaire? Who's the author? David Bach. Okay, David um, Bach. Real quick, I I am a, a business owner and I'm used to using QuickBooks to manage my mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, is there something equivalent for the personal? Like, is there is there a system or are we just, just solid spreadsheets and then that's it? Uh, you know, there's probably something. I use a spreadsheet. You so just good old fashioned. I want to do what you're doing so my glasses look like that in <laughs> next year. But there are yeah. tools you like Mint. I'm Mint sorry. is a very popular one. Mint is a, mm -hmm. is a if you if you like right. QuickBooks then you'll probably like Mint if you like a lot of um 
um, automated, like connected to your bank accounts and yes. um, a lot of uh, a lot I of reporting. That's what the has. I think that's, yeah. Mendo's a very popular one. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's free. It's a free popular tool, but you do they do require you connected to be connected with your bank account. So you just have to be um, cognizant of that if you're if you're uncomfortable with third party um third party services yeah. with access that might be a you know that might yeah. be it. but if you yeah. use quickbooks you probably you know you're probably used to that yeah, but right. um there are things like there are things like um mint um good budget is another one that doesn't require a uh, connection to you it, it it offers that utility but you can also like import um C csv okay. files if you okay. don't want that third party connection to your bank account so there are plethora of um of tools if you want to use something a little bit more sophisticated but i'm like donna too i honestly what works best for me is a uh uh google uh google sheets now google sheets and i and i the one thing i do which is a little bit different um is i print mine out i print mine out and post them on my refrigerator because i need to be able to look at things regularly so that keeps it top of mind to me so that's mm. something that I do in terms of like, you know, keeping my budget fresh and keeping it um, something that's always on my mind. So I'm always thinking about it. That sounds stressful, Tony. It sounds stressful. Yeah, I, I, print mine out. Out. I just look at it. <laughs> <laughs> try, yeah. for, try it for a month because it just again, I put my goals. I put like financial goals on there, you know, especially when I was um, working through paying off debt. And just I don't know if mm. um, people may not be familiar with my story, but my husband and I paid off one hundred and seven thousand. Uh, dollars worth of credit card debt. And so that was how I stayed uh, focused on that goal. And I, every month I put, you know, I put what our, what our debt totals were. And when they were shrinking each time, when they were shrinking, that was the source of motivation for me. Mm -hmm. So it was the opposite. It's actually the opposite of stress because I could see where I was getting closer to my goal. And if you think about seven years is a lot of months, mm -hmm. <laughs> so a lot of time in there. Um, so again, but you have to do what works for you. You know that was a yeah, you know, that, was that was something that, that I found that worked for me, and we can, and we and we stay with it. But um, a lot of people, a lot of you know, apps and and um, different tools are out there. So there's a plethora of things. We just have to figure out what works for you and keep it automatic and stick with it. Mm. One other thing you were talking about, um, if I had all the the people and was going to be a mentor, that I think it's important to realize mm -hmm. so you don't stretch yourself out. Is your financial strategy is going to change throughout your life, mm. depending on where you are. So it's different when you're single. It's different when you get married. It's different when you start having kids. It's different when those kids go to college. Lord have mercy. <laughs> it's different when they graduate. You get a big increase. Uh -huh. And then you retire. So throughout those different times, your strategies should change. And they should be different. Mm -hmm. And they will be different. And don't beat yourself up over it. If for some years you don't save as much as others or you don't invest as much as others or, you know, because it's, you know, it's one of your hard years. Right. And how, how important, I'm assuming you started your children off with bank accounts or passbook accounts mm -hmm. or whatever the case may be. Like how soon should everybody's child be with a little uh, account of some sort? Uh, in grammar school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because by the especially college, oh my god, I didn't I didn't imagine how the credit card companies came to Girl, you. Mm -hmm. yeah. At least to my kids in college, but I had already taught them everything yeah. before then, so they didn't have all those different credit cards and things like that. And you're like pizza. away for a pizza. Yeah, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. I don't know if they still do it like that, but that's how I was when I was in school. Mm. Yeah. Makes sense. This is good. This was this was this was great information. What other what other tips? What other tips or what are we like what are we missing in this outside of knowing we have to prioritize having the conversation first with self, right? Like mm -hmm. I can't talk to my daughter about nothing if I'm not right? Like uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I and I think that takes a moment to just sit with that and process that part of Oh, okay, I want to. I have a goal, and I or maybe it's just having goals, right? Mm -hmm. To know what they're doing, and sometimes I think that helps depending on where you are in life. Right. Question, do you all? Oh, this we get this a lot. Do you all recommend the five twenty and nine accounts for college? I will tell you. Uh, let me give that. Let me let me give you that. Um, the response that my brother, who's a who's a financial advisor, gave me. Okay, so I do have uh, five twenty nine set up for my kids, but one of the things that he suggested 
was because if you compare the the performance, if you will, the performance of 529 versus a simple index mutual fund, mm -hmm. index mutual funds um, outperform them and you can use them for whatever. Yeah. So for instance, what if your kid gets a full scholarship and doesn't need it, you know? And um, at 529s have some, 529s have some restrictions on what you can use the funds for. Um, so if, if your child gets to the point where he doesn't need it, then with a mutual fund, and I'm still, and I, I, I haven't decided specifically on which one I'm going to focus on, but with an index mutual fund, you have more flexibility in terms of use, mm. use it on anything. So that's okay. one of the things, but guess what? The bottom line, do something. something. So if, if 529s is what you, is, is what you have and what you, um, what you are comfortable with, uh, contribute to that. Contribute to that, contribute to that regularly, set it up automatically. So you don't have to think about it. Mm -hmm. so. I have 529s for my grandchildren. And mm -hmm. I realize that if one decides not to go, the other ones go get their money. No, I'm <laughs> 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 but you can transfer it. Right. You <laughs> the, 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 also the, the penalty is not so not that bad. You okay. can take okay. it and do something else with it. At least mine is not. Okay. So, that, so that's one of the, again, I, I have 529s, but my brother is, you know, he's a little more like, you know, specific and, and headstrong about things. And I do understand that, that his, you know, I think it's about just comparing, you know, past performance isn't an indicator of future, you know, future performance. We know that, but just historically, the, the index mutual funds have, um, are simple. They have done, you know, they generally outperform 529s. So, but speak to a financial advisor. And yes. I think it's yes. we are not responsible for anything. Right. <laughs> Based on what you process. said is do something. Yeah. Right. Do right. something. And then you right. can always change and decide on exactly. but you start and do something. And I think exactly. that's what's a, an important strategy. Try to do something now. Try right. as early as you can. Right. And divest. Don't put all your eggs in one basket. But what right. about, what about real quick? Because I know we're running out of time. But what about Robin Hood, like those kind of things? And again, we can't give solid advice. But if I think in the social media world, it's the you hear somebody say, "Oh, I just you know." For those that aren't interested, like that aren't familiar with stocks, is that a good do something? Like, because you guys are saying do anything. Do something. So if you're going to use, and Robinhood is just a platform. It's Robinhood. Uh, say, what is Robinhood? I never. <laughs> it's just so like, if you don't know about it, Donna, don't even worry about it. <laughs> if Robinhood did not help you get them glasses, we don't need it. Never mind. You said a spreadsheet. But yeah, the, you know, you can, I don't, you, I, ha I have it. I signed up just to get the little free stock, but, you know, I don't necessarily use it for just, personal preferences, but Robinhood, TD Ameri Ameritrade, um, e uh, Schwab, E-Trade, wow. whatever you use, right. use it and use it regularly. Okay. So okay. Um, uh, Tamika said Acorn. Huh? Tamika said Acorn. Acorn. Um, somebody Tamika mentioned said that, um, green, light. green Light. Green Light. Now, this is something we probably need to go a little bit. I, I would like to go a little bit more in detail about these various products because they are out there and they are helpful, but there are things, there are like pros and cons. Right. right. Pros and, cons. and that's with anything that's pros and cons to anything. And so it's just a matter of um, and I the, here's the thing about these things. It, it can be overwhelming. Right. It could be overwhelming to like I got to college. I got to get a, a you know, teach them how to use a credit card. I got to do this. I got to do. This. So, he, you know, keep it simple. Yeah. You know, keep it simple. Start maybe this year. Your focus is getting their five, getting their college savings fund set up, you mm -hmm. know, like get that going, get that on an automatic situation. And then, then maybe next year you move to, okay, I need to have their, you know, uh, savings account set up or something like that, you know, like, so, you know, make it simple on yourself so that you don't get overwhelmed and just stop. Right. That's what you don't want to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, maybe the, the first thing to do is like Donna was telling us, make sure that you are invested in your retirement savings, at least up to the mm -hmm. max, if nothing else. Make sure that is in place. You know, you know, like like you're on the plane, get your get your oxygen mask right. on first. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or you can take care of anybody else. So right. like, you know, set set manageable chunks of goals for yourself. Don't overwhelm yourself. And then the thing about it is once you get rolling. Mm -hmm. Once you get rolling and you get that under your belt, your confidence grows. Mm -hmm. And when your confidence grows and you start to maybe like connect with other people who are doing, you know, various things in the same area, they're sharing and you're like, oh, okay, I need to check into that. And so then your, your network, 
you know, your network of people that you that you discuss these things with grows, you know, and then maybe you do like Donna, um, Donna, I and another friend of ours, uh, we we've been doing this for years, but we we generally meet annually right to kind of go over our goals we, we have like a kind of a because we're all over the place and it's just like the first of the year is kind of our time to make sure we just get back together and we'll sit down and go over our goals and go over our successes and and opportunities for improvement from the previous year <laughs> from the previous year and uh, but this year we're doing it quarterly. Quarterly. We're just doing it quarterly, where we connect on Zoom and just and, and my other girlfriend she put it on the, on a calendar, you know. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. meeting invite. She sent it out. So I was like, oh, okay, this works. And even you know, so like it's just it's having having that um, maybe accountability. Accountability. Yeah, yeah, having that accountability partner to kind of check in and and um. And even though like my married, right, I'm married. And so I, you know, I'm working with my husband, but I still have girlfriends that I kind of check in with and just, um, you know, uh, bump heads with and, you know, iron sharpens iron. And we learn. And I told you, I'm holding on to Donna for dear life because she's kind of get rid of me. <laughs> Oh, I just, have, I just have flashbacks of the double income and the conversations and the, uh, you know, how y'all have to merge and really that's oh, yeah. such, a, such a part of starting the marriage is yes. that having that financial conversation yes. and just yes. how are we merging how yes. are we figuring that out how are yes. oh god yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that's, i mean there's so much to this and nobody can know nobody can know everything. your network becomes your network yeah <laughs> it's nice you like that yeah nobody mm -hmm. can know everything nobody can do everything right. but just start with one thing you know, yeah. start with one thing start with one place and figure out how you know figure out how you learn to you don't like to read books you may do you like to watch programs you know, do you like to yes, listen? I like to podcast? watch Bridgerton. Yeah. <laughs> not this semester, though. I mean, not this season, I right? Do? Yes. Why? Because they took the black guy off? Yes. yes. <laughs> nope, they added another black guy. Okay. We look at the conversation we heard about this. Bring you back. Like, you can add. Bring you back. <laughs> So, a new black guy on there. Y'all don't take my card away from me. I like the Bridgerton. <laughs> so figure, you know, figure out how you. I have never watched that, by the way. Um, but but <laughs> but I didn't watch Scandal either. I'm I'm late. I'm late. Yeah, I, I'm I'm late. I'm late on stuff. I'll get around to it eventually. That's why I like the on demand. But um, <laughs> but <laughs> but um, just again, if I can encourage people today, um, to just think of, as you're sitting here listening to us, think of one thing that you might want to look into um, this this quarter. One thing that you might need to look into or tighten up this quarter. Is it your retirement planning? Is it maybe finding a money mentor? Is it sitting down with kids and like um, discussing some budgeting or whatever? And another thing I'll, I'll say, here's another thing that worked really well for me. I like games. Mm -hmm. so there's this game called ca Cash Flow. This is something else I highly recommend to anybody who's number one interested in kind of um, just reframing or, or rethinking how you manage your finances, cash flow, and it's something that you can actually even play with your kids. Mm. It's, it's a board game. It's like it's like Monopoly on steroids. So you, you know, pull it out when you have some time. I'm I'm talking, to, but it is intense. It is funny as heck. You know, pull mm. you know, invite a couple of friends over or whatever. Play cash flow, and I'm telling you, it will change your 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 mindset in terms of how how you're managing your money. Real quick, because I I hear it in your tone, Tony. You about to wrap it up. <laughs> Tamika just said, "Do you all have books for children to read? Do you have any?" Is I'm assuming the Millionaire Next Door is a book that the children are. Well, no, to. that's a book for an adult. Yeah, oh. that, that they have to share kind of some. Tamika just said with... she'll say, she'll post some. Jerima has some. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. Thank some. you, Jerima. I have any kid books? Um, yeah, no, that's a good question. Thank you for yeah. asking for me. Y'all yeah, like, no, we talking about our like grown people money, okay? Yeah. <laughs> but I do. Okay, um, um, Dave Ramsey, and I know a lot. I know he has a a, a bit of a a difficult um uh, uh relationship with the black community or whatever. He's he's a little rough around the edges, but he does. Dave Ramsey does have like Financial Peace Junior. He does have um. Um, a lot of topics for kids, and he's a good writer. He's a good, he's a really good writer. So he's he's actually kind of 
what kicked off my my journey to um, to fix my finances, basically. So he had I haven't read them personally, though, in terms of for the kids, but he has a lot of offerings that okay. that he just modifies for the for the kid for the youth um, youth ankle. So that's a that's an option to look into as well. But thank you, Jerima, from Burst into Books for dropping <laughs> that knowledge. We know you knew. We knew okay. you would know. And she said Love. she'll have them in um, on this okay. live tomorrow. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't do that to yourself, Jerima. It's the nighttime. By tomorrow, she'll go. <laughs> we appreciate you. So, mm -hmm. anyway, well, this is great. I love thank you, you, Donna, for being thank here. Donna. This was thank great. you. I feel yeah, honest. this is motivational. If for no other reason, just to you know reflect and think on our money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. So is there anything else? Um, oh, before we before we leave, just uh, we want to remind people that Yvette um, Swanson Jones is I hope I keep saying her name. I hope I'm not mixing it up. My apologies if I am. But uh, I think it's Yvette Jones. Um, she is running a women veterans uh, career and resource fair on April 30th. Yep. And so this is for any any women that have been um, that obviously have been in the military or in the military. And we're also looking for volunteers to help. So if you have some free time on April 30th at any time of the day between six and five, um, I'll post the link in the in the comments. Please sign up. Um, this is a really worthwhile event, a really um, a lot of resources being shared with women that really, really need this. And so if you have some time or your kids are looking for some volunteer credit, this is a great opportunity to have them involved in something really worthwhile. And it's happening in Richton Park for our South Suburban families who don't always want to come to Chicago. It's a whole Richton Park situation. So you can do a whole, yeah. So come on and help. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks everybody for, for joining us. Thanks for the great comments and questions. Don again, love you. Um, thank, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. It was it was a pleasure. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night.